Right guys, I'm Dan from Stanton Bikes and today we have a very special day. We have just taken receipt of the CYC Proton 2. So um, what we're going to do in this video basically is put this bike together and then fit this kit. Now this is, you've seen the other video that we did with the uh, Gen 4 X1 Pro. This kit is the kit that we really wanted to get hold of, but they just didn't have it in stock at the time. This is far more on brand for us. It's more of a, a proper like bicycle conversion that gives you a legal output. So this is, this is a, a, bit, a big day for us really. We're gonna put it on this Gen 5 frame, but first off we need to build it into a bike. Now you've all seen us ham together bikes before, so we're not gonna put you through that again. But as soon as this is done, we're gonna go straight into fitting this, and we've not fitted it before. Um, so, you know, we've had experience on the Gen 4 X1 Pro, but we haven't used this one yet. So we might run into little things which will be interesting to, to find out. But, um, but yeah, so thank you very much for joining us on this video. We'll get building this and we'll see you in a minute. There you go. How was that? Nice and quick. So it's built up as a complete now. So this is ready to ride apart from obviously crank and bottom bracket and chain. But principally, this is just your standard bike, right? Standard Sherpa 853 Gen 5 complete, nice carbon wheels as well. So also what we've done, just to say this as well, we've also, because we've seen us do this anyway on the last video, uh, we've fitted the speed sensor here. And we've also fitted, there's a little thumb throttle. I'm not sure I'll run that. I've got a little wiring harness um, so that we don't have to run this. But I'm just going to see what it's like. Um, and then the little sensor, sorry, the reader that we've got on the other one as well, same again. So easy fit. Uh, just set it up, just set the wires so it's tied up around here. We'll see, I don't know whether they'll stay there or not, but we'll figure it out in a minute. Um, and then this, we know, well, we know that it's just chewing and biting all of this as we've done a little uh, test and we know it's going to stop it. So we created this little, um, little sleeve, yeah. What we used, was these come with the kit anyway, it's like little um, blockers to protect, like little protection pads to protect your paint and whatnot. So I got that and I got two, two little barrels like this for the back bolts that go on um, uh, FS dropouts. So basically put these together like that and then put that, this tape, cut it to size and then wrap that round it and now it's just created a little sleeve and it should mean that and then I'll put some insulation tape around it as well but it just uh, it just means that when this is rocked up underneath the I'll show you a lot so this is the next bit that we're going to do anyway put this in here and then when we rock this up to me it's going to be biting on this rather than on the cable so this is something that you know maybe we review in the future if we do do well with these units we can change the way that we route the bottom bracket so that it, uh, sorry route the um dropper cable so maybe it roots here or maybe it roots like the sedona you wouldn't have issues like this on the sedona or on the new um on the new switchback hardtail the gen 5 switchback you won't have that because it's the same style where the seat tube runs into the down tube and there's a hole cut in the down tube and everything just feeds through that rather than going underneath the bb like traditionally we like like we've done traditionally on stanton frames so that's the next step anyway i don't know why i'm taking that back out i may as well put that in Anna. easy piece no spaces on this side this is a 73 mil uh 73 mil bottom bracket shell you fit this on which is a little bracket that basically holds the motor on this side. So this will go into here like this and then these bolt into this. Yeah, just because when you put power down, the unit wants to pull across and rock, like rock up into the frame. Pardon me, pull across. So this is just helping brace this side and keep everything nice and stable to the bottom bracket. So then uh, 10 miller spacers on this side, feed this in. Dead simple, really, really simple. This is what I mean, like, but you've, you've, you've literally got your, your standard bike that you ride all day, every day, and then all you're doing is just putting this little motor on it, and you can go out on e-bike rides with your mates. I mean, to my mind, that's the best solution, surely, because you're riding exactly the bike that you're happy with, and you know, and all you're doing is electrifying it. 
And it's a kit that, that is cheaper than buying an N plus one e-bike, you know, just so that you can go out riding e-bikes. You think most people get out probably twice, like once a week or maybe twice a month. So if you've spent five grand on a really nice standard bike, and then you go out and spend another five to seven to 10 grand on an e-bike, and then calculate over the amount of time, like, so there's, let's say you've ridden it, let's say you go riding 52 times a year, you know, you think about how much money you're spending on 10 grand's worth of bikes, all you need is a kit, just pop that on, and then just ride your standard bike, and go out, I, th I think that's a much better solution myself. That'd be spot on. I was actually speaking to John, who who owns the company, CYC, it's his, his business. And he told me that the way that he's designed the batteries, yeah, no, I was just saying, like the way that he designed the battery is that it actually should be around the underside like this. And then the reason that this is so hard, aluminium cased, is just because it's supposed to take the knocks, you know, but I think in the front tri in the triangle looks a bit neater. I'll pick, I'll pick that up. You know what, I'm not gonna pick that up. I'm just gonna get another one. Stand, Where? Cheers, mate. <laughs> <laughs> Did a good job picking that up, mate. <laughs> All right, so now just throwing the battery in. Really simple, this is. Really cool as well. So you've got your cable connectors here, and then it's just literally quite brilliant, this. Just in. That's it, it's locked. And then all you've got then, where are the little keys here? And just that. And now that is secure on the frame. So the next step then is Let's to... Have a look, that looks good. Yeah? yeah? It does look neat, doesn't it? Um, let's put the axle in. Rubber stop. There you go. There we are. Then there is a, a like a screw gate or a, a bearing compression thing here. Just nip that up nice to the bottom bracket. Then the pedal arm. And then your bolt. Where is the bolt? Of course. Right, they literally are right in front of me. And I think that is an eight. Really, really simple. That's it, isn't it? It's just like plug the bits in and you're done. Make sure nothing's all in the way. Squarey looking one to that, yeah. Round one. And then, just need to fluff that up a bit. It is, yeah. Like, oh, oh no, it's not, it needs a chain. It needs a chain. Something else that you need to do that we did earlier is just basically fitting this little uh, chain ring guard. And uh, the chain ring. And Yeah, and the chain ring. But it literally just slots on and just, but it's so easy. This is an old drivetrain. I know it's a nice drivetrain, but it is an old one. So we just use this and see if it's going to be too powerful, like if the if the motor and everything is going to be too powerful for this standard drivetrain or not. I don't think we'll have any issues. It's not like the other one, is it? The uh, the other setup, like the X1 Gen 4 Pro, is so powerful. You know, this is like this is standard e-bike sort of power. But apparently, after speaking to John, he told me that you can do a little bit to it, like just tweak it up a little bit, and you can get it to. Uh, to, I think it's like 2,000, like a 2,000 watt output or something. But it's like it's just a case of sorting it out in the app if you wanted to do that. But I think we're just going to keep this standard for now. Just keep it standard. Yeah. 
Legal. Legal. Legal, standard. 15 miles an hour or whatever it is. And uh, we're just doing normal e-mountain bike, standard setup. That's a water bottle. That's it, we're in. Hold on now, because we're not shifting right yet. Hello, tune. That's enough for oh, that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. That's enough for that. Oh, that. <laughs> you shat yourself. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Fun and laughter in workshop today. Yeah. Someone else's expense. That's bullying. That's bullying. Oh, dear. There we have it. Should we take it for a little spin outside, a little muck around? Oh yeah, okay, all right, let's do that. A little flappy piece here that you pull down and you press this good looking silver button. And then you've got a little button up here on your screeny piece. You just pressinate that and then that should come up saying something, has it? There you are. Wham it straight onto three. Three? Yeah. Okay, it's broke. Is it gonna work? Whoa! Wow! That's pretty cool, isn't it? That's kilometers per hour. I think I have to go into the app and change it to... So, here we have it, all set up, ready to go. Um, we've got the speed sensor working now. So, if I just bump this, we're on the... Uh, we're on a 10 tooth sprocket and this is a 38 tooth chain ring version. Um, and so if I just dab this, I mean it, it's still saying like 64 kilometers an hour, which I think is around 30 miles an hour, isn't it? So, but I don't know. I, don't, I would have to see what it's like when you're actually riding. As far as I'm aware, it cuts out. So it, it spiked up to that, but then, um, it shot back down like if you if you notice the pedal arm stopped spinning and you can just hear it even though this is fully depressed it's slowly decelerating so yeah yeah so it's cutting out basically so that it's remains legal limit um which lends itself to what John was saying, actually, obviously it's his kits, he's making them. Um, and he said that with a little bit of mucking about on the phone, on the app, you can get this to, to output. So you're doing like 30 miles an hour, 35 miles an hour, quite comfortably. Um, so, you know, just for use on the throttle for like some climbs and whatnot, and then just using it as a standard e-bike. But I might get, I've got a different uh, wiring harness here. So if I wanted to, I could just change it out. So there's only one connector here so this basically this wire that splits into two would just be one and it would just go straight to the um to the reader and not worry about the throttle but i just wanted to give it a go and see what it was like on this okay should we take it outside and have a little spin around on it joe yeah and then if you want um we can take both bikes out maybe tomorrow or early next week and then just try one against the other just see what they're like I'm going to have a little faff around on the app as well, see if I can tune them up a little bit, get them a bit more, get that a little bit safer and maybe put a bit more, get a bit more power out of this, this one. But let's get it down, let's have a look. So I should say as well, it's very likely that uh, we're going to become a CYC distributor here in the UK. Um, so you'll be able to purchase a frame and then if you wanted to fit a, a, a kit to it to run it as an e-bike here, here and then you can. Okay, 
Weather's not great, is it? Something I'm noticing as well, it's not very heavy. That is, for putting all this stuff on it, it doesn't feel that heavy at all. It must be, um, it'd be good to weigh it, but I reckon it's probably about, probably about 30 pound. Like the weight of a good eat, a good uh, FS. Oh. Yeah. So it does cut. You can feel it. Reading the speed. Reading the speed. That's annoying. It's not reading the speed. There's something wrong with the speed sensor. So I need to sort that out. But overall, I mean, it just feels like an e-bike. It doesn't feel, you know, you haven't got that kick in power that the other version, that the uh, Gen 4 X1 Pro had. Um, and it just feels like your normal little Sherpa to ride, but obviously power assisted. So I'm really excited about this. I'm excited to give this a proper go. So um, you up for it tomorrow, Joe? Yeah? Um, all right, so yeah, uh, thank you very much for joining us on this video. Um, if you've enjoyed this, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Meet us in for part two, because we're going to go and take this little bad boy out and the uh, other bike that we've done, the other e-bike that we've done. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed this and I'll catch you on the next one. Thank you very much.